G'day, John. Elliot from News Talk ZB here. Um, how's the squad settled in over the first uh, couple of days? How did the first training session go this morning? Uh, yeah, no, it went okay. Um, we uh, we actually had a bit of a clarity run yesterday as well, light, uh, light run, a bit of fun, and today we sort of upped the ante a bit. Um, but the boys are all in good spirits. We settled them pretty well. Um, we were m minus our uh, defence coach for a couple of days, but he's just arrived. Um, so, uh, yeah, so we're uh, pleased to have him in. What was the score with Scott? Was it a, a passport issue or what, what was the, the late arrival? <laughs> I think he just wanted a couple extra days off in New Zealand, but no, we no, he's had a bit of a cold, and um, he uh, did the right thing um, by um, contacting Doc, and of course didn't travel the team, but now he's all good to go. Uh, in terms of the squad, any fresh injuries or anything like that um, of the players that have travelled over? Everyone's fit at this stage to, for selection. Yep, yep. No, we've uh, we have um, we've. Yep, we're all good to go. We uh, everyone that's here is so far available, um, and uh, yeah, we we'll look forward to naming the team in a couple of days. Oh, g'day, John. Mark Hinton here. Um, I think last test we clearly saw um, a you know a great response from the All Blacks. I guess under under the pressure and under. Um, um, you know, uh, the motivation, I guess you could say, of a, of a not-so-good performance in Bleeders Low 1. Uh, in, in terms of, I guess, cajoling that type of performance, you know, off the back of a good display, what, what are the challenges for you guys as coaches to be able to achieve that? Oh, there's, you know, once we've done the review, we saw there was heaps to work on. Uh, we were far from perfect in Auckland, um, you know, so it gave us... Um, you know, we had a long review yesterday with the boys and um, there's clearly heaps for us to work on and, you know, we've gone, we've started that process. Um, so, yeah, we were, you know, it's, our motivation is to play a lot better um, and to keep climbing, um, you know, not to go uh, backwards in any way. Um, so, yeah, I know, I, you know, in fairness, Australia would look at the same, their performance and go, well, yeah, they've got, they've had some opportunities as well. I think they got across the try line a couple of times and didn't get a, didn't get a, the try awarded, one from a more, one from wider out with a good tackle from Anton Leonard Brown. But, um, you know, there was a couple of opportunities that they blew that, you know, the scoreline could have been a bit different. So um, we're not naive to all of that. So we understand um, that we've got heaps to work on and, you know, we know we're playing against a really good side. Um, so, yeah, it was, uh, there's no motivation to keep getting better. Hello, John. It's Justin Chadwick here. I just wanted to ask what you've noticed about the Wallabies under Dave Brand. You've had two tests to look at them now. What differences have you noticed? Um, under Dave Rennie, is that right? Is that what you said? Under the new coaching setup now. Oh yeah, okay, yeah. I think I think uh, I think they're they're doing a great job by the looks. I mean, the you know this is a you know it's a pretty tough side um, physically. You know they take the game to you. Um, they're aggressive in pretty much every department. Um, you know I can you see they've got you know the benefit of um, uh, coaches from other parts of the world as well. You know Scott Wise Mental, uh, good coach. Um, you know so they've got they've you know they've. They've, they've, Dave done his homework and he's brought in a coaching team that's um, very experienced. So, um, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a side that we've got a lot of respect for, and um, you know, the way they, they, you know, like the way they can play the game, their fast flowing game and attack, and you know they get hard off the line and defence, and you know their set piece is uh, one area of the game that you know we know that um, they're going to come at us. So yeah, so we've got a lot of respect for them. Are you planning for O'Connor to stay at 10 or do you think he might move to 12? Uh, I've just, uh, wouldn't know. Uh, I've best just sort of read what you've read probably. Um, you know, they've got other options. Um, you know, they've got some other big midfielders as well that they can uh, they can use. Um, I guess with um, Tamua and um, O'Connor, they gave them a sort of a dual playmaking role. It's whether they stick with that formula or whether they, they go to a, a bigger body in the midfield. Um, but, yeah, we'll have to wait and see. 
And just how different is it taking on the Wallabies on their home soil compared to in New Zealand? Yeah, I mean, I think they've already come out and said, you know, they're looking forward to f playing in front of their own fans. You know, they had a, you know, uh, a f you know, fairly significant tour in New Zealand and away from home, and you know that binds them and um, makes them, um, you know, improves their team spirit and everything about their 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 squad. Uh, but um, you know, there's nothing quite like playing in front of home, home, you know, your family, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So you know, they're playing in, you know, in um, playing in Sydney. Um, you know they'll they'll lift for that, and um, you know again it's just one of the challenges that that we have to face. Right, John, um, with uh, with Adi staying behind to tend to his family affairs, you'll pro you'll have, well you will have a new um, new face in your loose trio. Um, what are the what are the chief challenges for whoever you pick coming in in to replace Artie in terms of what he brings, um, um, in terms of the impact he's, was that he, he's been able to make, not just the last couple of tests, but really the last couple of years in the All Blacks jersey. So what are the what are the challenges for whoever comes in in his place? Oh, it's not really a challenge for whoever comes in. I mean, the players that we've got to take Artie's place, we've got a lot of faith and trust in. So um, they'll bring a different skill set to the game, you've got Dalton Popoli, Hoskins Tutu, you know, they're both excellent players, you know, um, got Akira Ani who's had a great super rugby season as well. So, you know, we've we've uh, we've got some real powerful players to to replace Adi and, and that bring their own skill set to the game and um, you know, I, you know, I'm we're very confident that uh, whoever does take Artie's place is, is gonna really do a good job. You know, Artie is a, a fantastic player, he's a leader um, you know he's got a lot of experience and in, and in, uh, in obviously what he brings to our game. Um, but yeah, like I said, we've got a we've got a lot of faith in uh, in um, whoever comes to uh, in, sorry takes uh, Artie's position. John, Andrew, Andrew Gordy here from News Hub. Um, just following on from the, the question before about, about the impact of, of Dave Rennie, I suppose, just, just further to that, can you talk to us about, and I know some of your players um, indicated after the Wellington test, they, they said they felt like they were playing against Dave's chief side. Have you sort of noticed, or have the players anecdotally noticed, sort of a change in, in mentality from this Wallabies team? Do you sense that there is a, a change in belief that they might carry into these two tests at home now? Yeah, I think they would have taken a lot of confidence out of their New Zealand tour. I think the way they, um, you know, they took the game to us in New Zealand was pretty impressive. Um, you're right, there were uh, parts of their game that um, we saw, um, you know, that that you know definitely. If you look at the Chiefs, the way that uh, the Chiefs have played over the years under, under Dave, there was definitely some parts of the of the game that um, we saw under him, but. Um, you know, you can't just, you know, put, you know, it's not just Dave, it's the whole coaching team, really. You know, they've got a new coaching team and everyone will bring their little piece to that party. So, uh, yeah, it's like I said, we've, we've, and now playing at home now, so it's a, it's a um, whole different um, kettle of fish, really. So we respect that. Um, and as a, you know, as an All Black side playing in Australia, we, we've already come out and said we understand what our, what our record's like in, in, in Australia. We've, we've, you know, it's always been a tough place. For, for, for a New Zealand side to win and in the weekend um, that's not going to be any different and, and I suppose regardless of whether it's down to, to Dave Rennie or, or any of the coaching staff just overall do you sense the Wallabies have improved perhaps since if we can use last year's World Cup as a market do you sense the Wallabies have improved and, and in which areas do you think they have I think their set pieces just got better. You know, they they, they had a real crack at us at scrum time. You know, their lineouts functioning well. Um, you know, they're aggressive defensively. Um, you know, we've uh, they've used the ball with width, um, and you know they've stressed us many occasions out wider, and um, we've had to scramble pretty hard in defence. Um, you know, they they're a side that's priding themselves on probably never giving up. You know, and. Um, you know, we hurt them with a couple of things in Auckland, but um, you know, like I said to you earlier, there, you know, they blew a couple of chances that they would have been a little bit disappointed with that could have kept them in the game. So, I know there was a pretty different, you know, the scoreline was, um, you know, was was sort of, you know, twenty points or whatever. But at the end of the day, um, it could have been quite a bit different to that. John, 
on, um, I think we saw in, in Auckland when you guys play at the pace you want to, you know, good things happen. What What are the keys for that? What, what needs to happen for the All Blacks to play at that pace on a sustained basis? Um, yeah, look, I mean, we've all got to be on the same page in terms of what we what we do in attack and um, we've all got to work really hard, you know, in times in Wellington we didn't work that hard and um, off the ball um, to get into positions where we could play at that type of intensity and, and in Auckland um, I think we did, you know, and um, you know the challenge for us is just to maintain that. Uh, we know we we've we've we know we've, they've got a couple of really tough ball fetches and uh, guys that can slow the ball down. So um, we have to be mindful of that and uh, respect that and make sure that you know that our carry game is good and our clean out work is good and um, that we can give um, you know our nines quality ball so that we can um, you know get that flow going and attack. Um, in, in Wellington, um, we didn't have much ball, and in Auckland, we had some ball. So uh, when we do get ball and we do get that going, we know we are a dangerous side with with some dangerous players. But we also understand that you know the Australians are doing whatever they can to put pressure on us, and um, and we've got to be very smart the way we we play the game here in Sydney. And just to, um, I think it was a year to the day yesterday that. That the All Blacks lost that World Cup semi final to England. Um, I just wonder what are the, I, I know you weren't part of that or anything, but what are the lessons from a, you know, pivotal day, pivotal defeat, I guess, in New Zealand rugby history? What are the lessons that are still relevant today from that, John? Oh, uh, we, you know, I mean, obviously we haven't, I don't, I don't think anyone really knew it was a year ago. And we have, everyone, you know, this group's mindset is about going forward and, um, uh, I guess, but you know, if you if you want to answer to that question, I guess the 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 the, bit, the you know the a gold nugget in any sport is being consistent and being able to to front up you know all the time and um, you know and um, you know of course we talk about that and uh, but you know the All Black side wants to win every Test match they play um, but the reality is is that you know sometimes you come under pressure and sometimes you don't get what you want. Um, and, uh, you know, we know that we have to play very well again in the weekend. And I know I'm repeating myself here, but we do have a lot of respect for Australia. Um, and uh, we know that we have to play very well to get a result that we want. Any questions, team? Last questions? Okay. John, just, just one more before we go. Oi, oh, I think I got you there, Joe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, John, just one before, more before we go. Hey. Um, is, is, there, is there any part of you that is, how much does it grate, I suppose, that you haven't managed to, lo- like, the, the draw in Wellington means that you obviously head to Australia and, and you've given the Wallabies an opportunity, I suppose, to take this, this trophy off you. Is that, how, how does that sit with you and, and the rest of the team and, and, and how much, I suppose, do you expect the Wallabies will feed off the fact that they, they come home now with an opportunity? Yeah, I guess it's a couple, it's twofold, really. I guess they, you know, for the, from an excitement perspective, I, I guess that um, everyone's loving the, loving the fact that this, uh, that this series or this Bledisloe Cup series is a, is a real contest. Um, and, you know, the Bledisloe Cup hasn't been won by a Kiwi side or the All Black side in, in Australia for a long time, so um, you know it does it does present a challenge to us, and it's a challenge that that we've had it that we've talked about. Um, you know, it is what it is. You know, we'd love to be able to say, okay, well, it's locked away and sitting in New Zealand, but the fact that it is it's here, this the Bledisloe Cup is here. It's here to be won, and it's here to be won by two sides that are pretty competitive. So, um, and that's. And that's great for for rugby, and and I guess it, all eyes will be on the around from around the world will be will be on this test match. Yeah, 